This is the hadith saying all the prayer of the Muhammad and Abduls goes to Muhammad, not to Allah. He says, All your prayer, salat, not a blessing. The latter translation says the word blessing. It says, أَكْثِرُوا عَلَيَّ الصَّمِنَ الصَّلَاةَ فِيهِ فَإِنَّ صَلَاتَكُمْ مَعْرُوضَ عَلَيْهِ فَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَكَيْفَ تُعْرَضُ صَلَاتُنَا عَلَيْهِ Messenger of Allah, how our prayer will be displayed for you, submitted to you. <laughs> so who is the one who prayed to a human? Are you there, Abdul? Who is the one who prayed to a human? It's you. All your prayers submitted to Muhammad. So is God. Same time, even your even your God is a man. As Muhammad described him. Muhammad described the difference between a Dajjal and Allah. The only difference between them is one eye. Right? Do you see it? What is the difference between a man and Allah? A man, his name is al Masih al-Dajjal, which means he will claim to be the Messiah. Okay, you just said the Messiah is a man. It's your text. Let me remind you of what you said, you idiot. A guy will come and he will say, I am the Messiah. That's wonderful. He's a liar. Okay. You're a prophet saying, be, be careful. The Messiah of the Jal, he is one eye, Allah is not. <laughs> That's mean your God, Allah is one eye, is two eyes, he's a man. Muhammad is worried that you will be confused between him and the false Messiah. But the false Messiah is a man, so why will we be confused unless Allah is a man too? So those Muslims, they come and they, they you know, they poo -poo, they do poo, poo They have no idea what they are talking about, you know? If your God is not a man, you will not compare between him and a man. And you will not be worried that they will think that he is Allah, and the only difference between him and Allah is one eye. And this is the hadith, which is very sahih, saying the difference between Allah and the false messiah, the antichrist, is one eye. By the way, both of them, they have two eyes. But the Dajjal, his eye is damaged. So who is the one who worship a man? So my friends, I hope today we are we gave enough to the atheist. You know, I don't I don't uh, consider you in my program to debate you because you are not worth it. Honestly, atheism is so stupid even to debate. And if you want to say to me, atheism and science, they connect, we just showed you numbers that the majority of scientists are Christians, not atheists. So even there you lost. Even there you lost. If one day you are able to make all scientists atheists, then I will say you did not fail really. You are successful to have more foolish people around you. But until now, as you see, you are suffering from big failure, you and your atheism. And if you believe in evolution, that a chicken became an elephant, or you used to be a human, or used to be a monkey and became a human, well, you need to explain to me how the morality have evolution too. That's a stupid idea to believe in, because morality have nothing to do with evolution of a body. That's nothing to do with it. And always you fail in that part too. Because if you say to me, I have morality, I ask you from where you get that? Is that the evolution thing? What? Right? In the same time, you know, actually, uh, atheism and, and Islam, they are somehow, they are, they are like in agreement in some places. As an example, uh, you know, the, 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 the Quran teach that Allah, he cursed the Jews and he made them pigs and monkeys. A 
atheist is the opposite. Atheist want to convince you that the monkey, the human, he, he himself, he used to be a monkey and now he is a human. But, but you know, this is stupid to say, because if you used to be a monkey, then you just changed and you're still a monkey. This is why you see the picture I posted in the thumb. It says he was a monkey, he's still, he's still a monkey. You see, evolution does not mean you became a human. You will not become different species. You just a monkey. Evolution will not make you a new species. Do you understand people? Evolution does not make a new species. If evolution is the same species, is it changing? So if he is convinced that he used to be a monkey, then he is still a monkey. Are, are we listening? This is why in the picture I posted in the thumb for my video, it says, Atheist wins. He was a monkey and he's still a monkey. Did you get my idea now? Actually, if you look at Darwin, honestly, he looked like a monkey. Look at him. Look at the eyes. So you win. This is why I don't debate atheist. They, they have nothing to debate about. It's silly, silly belief. You know, it's just, there's no even believing. You don't, know, you don't even know what they believe. Once uh, an atheist, a smart atheist, he was debating me and he got me busted. You know, he said, Christian Prince, do you like banana? I said, sure, I love banana. He says, see, I should not say that. I mean, because I love banana, and I could not resist to say right away fast, like I was so fast, says, but after I said that, I, I regret, because the atheist, he won the debate now. He says, see, you like banana. You go back to your roots. That's it. You cannot win with an atheist. Atheism is not even worth to debate. And not only that, I have a good news for you. Before you die, one day you will get sick, you will say, oh God, help me. Oh God, just wait. Just wait. All your atheism will disappear in your pant. You will dump your atheism in the twelfth seat. Suddenly you will say, oh God, huh, please help me, God. Uh, you know, God, I believe in you. Help me. Just do anything, please. God, I will believe in you. Just, just, just save me from this, you know. Yeah. yeah. You Christian criticize Muslims here who give you guarantee that you will go to heaven. None of you follow the rules. That's because you are a stupid, you idiot. Following the rules does not take you to heaven. Because if following the rules will take us to heaven, then only those who follow the rules will go to heaven. This is your statement, right? And as a Muslim, you are a Muslim, right? According to your prophet, he says, Every son of an Adam is a sinner. So your prophet, he answer you, you idiot. Based on your statement, every son of an Adam is a sinner. So the one who follow the rules, he will not... He's not exist. So how you will go into heaven in Islam then? This is why I say when Muslim they speak to me, they don't they don't give me they don't give me like refutation. They they they, they go like he have a load in his back and he dump like you know whatever dump he him he have like popo dutu popo susu kuku he pee I don't know. You idiot! If every human being is a sinner, even in your religion, that's mean nobody follow the rules. So it is not sin will not make you not to go to heaven. It is you not fighting the sin and not asking for forgiveness. Because if sin will not make me to go to heaven, who, who of us here did not commit sin? If there's any. The Bible says only God is good. Only God is good. And that is Jesus, my friend. Even your funny prophet Muhammad, 
he is a sinner. In the Quran, chapter 19, verse 19, it says, Jesus, the Holy Son, is a holy. Holy who? Son. Son of who? Of God. The Muslim, they say, son of Mary, but you belong to your father, not to your mother. Even the Quran says, Call them by the names of their fathers. If we go in the Quran, we will find Muhammad making a statement claiming that Allah is talking, which is very stupid to say. And the statement saying, Oh Muhammad, may Allah forgive your sin. Do you see it? So based on your statement, those who commit sin, they don't go to heaven because they don't follow the rules. Well, Muhammad don't follow the rules. He told you go and marry four, he have unlimited. He was a child molester. He go after his own son wife and he flirt with the wife when, when the husband was away. He kidnapped women, he raped women, he steal, he is a caravan rider. I mean, should I count? Endless. You're a prophet, say, don't listen to music. Like, what the heck? But every single Muslim, you listen to music. Don't make pictures. Every single Muslim make pictures. According to your prophet, the one who make pictures or he take pictures, Allah will bring him in the judgment day and he will force him to blow in it to make him create it as a punishment and he will send him to hell. Why you are insulting us? Why you always insulting us? Cannot you talk like a human being to we you Muslims? Thank you very much for saying that. This is a, this is a good statement. So when I say to you the truth, you get insulted. But you calling me pig in the Quran is not insult. Just to show you the hypocrisy of those Muhammadan. You call me pig in the Quran is not an insult. You call me an animal in the Quran is not an insult. You call me kafir, which means somebody a liar. He hide the truth is not an insult. You're a prophet saying when you see a Christian in the street, spit in his face and force him to walk in the sewage and don't greet him with peace. That is not an insult. When the Quran chapter 9 verse 29 says, fight the Christian, kill the Christians and force them to pay the jizya and they are humiliated and subdued. How hypocrite you are. Look who is talking about insult. So you are upset from the word idiot, but they are not upset from calling us pigs and monkeys. You are not upset from calling us najis. Najis, how dare you? Hypocrites. You are the same as the Pharisees who can swallow a camel and they don't notice it. But they will say, look, 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 there is a hair there, there's a hair, I saw a hair. Hypocrite people. You're a prophet. He ordered you to insult the Christians. What kind of a prophet this prophet is? Well, Jesus says, when you see somebody, you know, somebody, he slam your face, you know, give him the other cheek. Muhammad, he says, when you see a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu or a Buddha in the street, spit on him. Force him to walk in the sewage. You have to bother him. You have to harm him. Is that your prophet talking or me? And then you give me a speech about respecting us. What a hypocrite. Munafiq is you. Here we go. He just called me names. He's insulting me. He's asking me not to insult. And now he's insulting me. He's calling me Munafiq. Let us see who is the Munafiq. You know what Munafiq is? Munafiq is someone say something and do something else. That is you Muslims. Because you follow Islam. This is the chapter 3, verse number 28 in the Quran. Read with me and die laughing. Let us see who is the Munafiq, the hypocrite. The religion of hypocrisy is the religion of Islam. The religion of Satan, satanic cult, the only cult in the world teach you you can lie, is Islam. I never study any cult. Say you are required to lie. And that is a holy lying. Who is the munafiq? Who is the hypocrite? 
<laughs> follower of the devil Muhammad read carefully with me this is the religion of Muhammad chapter 3 verse number 28 and look I'm not showing you to a Christian prince interpretation or not a Christian prince translation this is their, what they teach in the school this is the official government of the filthy king the king of Jordan who every single king in in the, in the West and America, Joe Biden, he said, thank you, the King of Jordan, for for helping us. He's just our potato. He's our, he's our puppy. No wonder he is so bad and he is so corrupt. He is descendant from Muhammad, according to them. Let the believer not to take the non-believers. Okay, the hypocrite, the Quran course hypocrite. You cannot, take, you cannot take the hypocrite as a believer. Look at this. And then he says to them, you can take the Christians or the Jews as a, as a friends, okay? And the one who take them and become might and honorable, uh, who is sincere to take us as a friend, he do that, seek him might and honor by taking the hypocrite and disbelievers as a friend. He has no connection with Allah. Go and see the Sheikh Uthman shaking hands with, the, with the, David Wood. The one who ate the Quran and the one who made movies about Muhammad. Shaking, shaking hands and give him five and taking selfie and give him hug and call him my friend. Why you do that? They will say to you, no, he don't mean it. He is a liar. Sheikh Uthman is a practicing taqiyya, brother. Who is the, who is the munafiq? <laughs> the hypocrite. You. Every single one of you, if you practice Islam, this is your religion in front of you. And look what it says. The one who mean to have a friend as a Christian, he has no honor, no mercy, no protection, which means the Muslim will kill him. So how the king of Saudi Arabia says, American, our friends. How the prince of Qatar, the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, he opened the biggest bases for American Marines in the world. And he paid for it. How are Dugan, the Muslim leader, the one who prayed to Allah, he have three American bases in his country. When the Quran says in chapter 5 verse 51, take not Christians and Jews as a friends, and the one who take them, he is one of them. Read carefully. It says, the one who made, he has no honor, no connection, no protection from Allah, no mercy, which means we kill him, we rape, we rape his wife. But yet, if you guard yourself against them, okay, save yourself from them. Take it as we are security. Saving yourself from them by speaking in a friendly way toward them with while your heart is like this. Do you see it? So they go to Christian naive people. They say to them, we are friends. We, uh, Islam teaches us to love everybody. Islam teaches us to respect everybody. Yes, brother. He call you brother. But in his heart, the devil is there. And this is not my words. As you see, this is the Quran. Do you have a respond, Abdul? Are you there? Who is the hypocrite? This is the this is the Satan himself. A Satan who teach people to lie to each other and in their heart they should hate you. We Christian, we don't hate Muslims. No, I will never hate them. Why I want to hate them? But you as a Muslim, you have to hate us. So you are the one who is a munafiq. Every single one of you who follow this is a munafiq. And if you don't follow this, you are not a Muslim. As you see, it says, the one who don't follow this, he has no connection with Allah. So a true Muslim is someone who hate, but in his heart, if he could not say it in his mouth, as if he like, if he live in America or something, but in his heart, he hate you, but in his lips, he say nice things to you and the proven in front of you. Am I making things up? This is the official government of the King of Jordan, owned by the king, which is a piece of garbage. And this is a clear proof that Islam is the religion of the devil. If it's not from the devil, will not teach to hate against other people. And Jesus is the only true God, for he says, love the Muslims. Love the Buddhas, love the Hindus, love everybody. Love your enemy. Bless them. Bless those who curse you. That is teaching of Jesus. This is why wherever Islam goes, Muslims run away. Even you Muslim, you run away from Islam. 
How many Muslims they come to Europe every year? Why don't go to Saudi Arabia? Why don't go to Libya? Why don't go to Syria? Why don't go? You know, they wanna, they don't wanna go there. They don't wanna live between Muslims. There's no life for them in a Muslim country. Every single Muslim he dream to run away, to escape Islam. This is the truth. And then they come to England and says, "We love Islam. We are Muslims." Hypocrites. I just yesterday I saw in the news. A Muslim girl, she is dating a, a person, he is a Christian. Or maybe, I don't know. He is not a Muslim. That's what he was saying. And obviously they are, you know, sleeping together. The family of this Muslim girl, six of them, they chase the girl, they want to kill her. They punch her, they beat her, she have she is she is a brightness, you know, they wanna be, you know, they beat her, the bodies came, they arrest him, all of them. And they ask the girl why why they are doing this to you? She said, because I am going out with someone is not a Muslim. They come to this country. They dream to come to this country. When their girls and their daughters, they go into school, they wish to go back to Jordan. They wish to go back to, to Egypt. They wish to go back. Oh my girl, she is having a noise. Abdu, and your boyfriend, he is not a Muslim. All of those who they are coming to the West and they are Muslims, in 10 years from now, they will regret all they have to live as a Western people. Just wait. That's why those Muslims who they are they claim to be conservative, they act like they, 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 they go to school, they watch their daughter. And their daughter, they go, they sleep around, but in front of their father, they come home and they are wearing hijab. Do you remember the lady, her name is Foxy? Who remember Foxy? Anyone remember Foxy? Foxy is a Canadian woman. She converted to Islam because her boyfriend is a Muslim. And she liked to associate with Muslim boyfriends. She made a video speaking about reality. She's a Muslim now, supposedly. She said, those Muslim men, they are hypocrite. When they want to marry, they want to marry a virgin girl. And then she said, but who is a virgin? All those Muslim girls I know, they go and they take it in, eh, I don't, I don't want to say the word, in the wrong location. <laughs> go watch the video. She said the truth. All of them, they are not virgins. Number one product in the Middle East is virgin again, or virgin surgery. They fly to, to, to Thailand to make them virgin again. Hey mom, I want to go to Thailand before my wedding party. <laughs> ah, anyway, so my friend, by his name we are victorious and we, we will not hate the Muslims and we encourage you all not to hate them. We hate the devil, we hate, li we hate, we hate lies, you know. Uh, uh, fight the lies and don't focus in a person. Those are poor people, they are misleaded and they are victims. And, you know, war is war. Like, you know, Taliban, they are criminals, they are evil. They will fight them and we, we defeated them always. And they will never win. Look at them. They're miserable. Even now, we are in the heart of Kabul. Taliban don't dare to say we want to kill America. Don't dare. Don't dare to say we support Daesh. They changed. They became uh, good infidels. <laughs> good believers, sorry. <laughs> they became good Taliban suddenly. <laughs> The Shia they celebrate just a few days ago, Ashura. The Shia they celebrate in the heart of Kabul, imagine. And Taliban they were watching, they did not even dare to touch them. You see how hypocrite they are? Who is the hypocrite? They say they, 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 they are teaching for the last 20 years that the Shia is kuffar. And then when they are in the office, suddenly Shia they are okay. <laughs> Uh, a Muslim convert killed his own 18-old son because he became a Christian. I don't know about this story. Well, you hear tons of stories, my friend. And the one who ever killed in the name of Jesus, he will be in heaven. Don't don't cry for a person who died for the sake of his belief. He will he will have the glory. He is in a separate and special place. I heard actually that the Muslims they reported a Christian from Indonesia after a debate. He is an ex-Muslim. He, he he 
he destroyed the, the Muslim in the debate and they called the police for him and they arrested him. So if you are in the Indonesian, if you are Indonesian, you should make a video about this, translate into in English, and we can send it to churches and those churches they can call and they call the congressmen and we you know we, we can we can make a movement to, to to check with the Indonesian government. Because Indonesian government, by the way, in case you do not know, they are under the, the like they are subdued to USA. They don't dare even to say no to USA. They claim to be Islamic government and Islamic army and Islamic potato tomato. You know that you know you know the thing, but in reality they are potatoes. This government is under the command of USA. So be active. If you are Indonesian, who is an Indonesian American, call your congressman, call the Senate. And here in America, you can talk to anybody. Nobody can say no to you. You can call the congressman office and he have to talk to you. Let them hear your voice. And let us protect those who need our help. So, my friend, glory to the Lord. We are always victorious. And no atheism can hurt us. And Islam is a joke. And we prove it every day. And my offer for those who challenge to debate me and instead of saying to me, show your face, we'll show you a phone call and call me. Stop being afraid and terrified and scared. People who watch this video today, if you are an atheist, my friend, atheism is not right. Atheism is misleading. And time will come, you will become old, and you will see how wrong you were. Do you see those let me mention to you some names you know david wood and anthony roger do you know that both of them they used to be atheists they love atheism they spend their life atheist go and ask them what happened atheism is dark no future no hope actually even according to science that those who have a belief they can fight illness way better can you believe it pure science this is not about religion now even according to science and scientists you can go and search right now that those who have a belief they can fight and they can survive better than those who have no belief that's why jesus said Believe in a stone, you will recover. Stone, it's a stone. But he was talking about the stone. He is the stone. He is the cornerstone. Believe, my friend, can save you. Somebody might say to me, oh, somebody have a cancer. He's a believer. He did die. Still his belief save him. We save him from a lot of misery before he die a person who ever believe he is sure where he will go he is sure that he is not dead he is sure that he will survive he have a better survival he die happy there is a monk who spent his life serving the people praising God serving the poor and he's dying He's like 80 something they brought a doctor for him and the doctor he looked at him and he came out he says I think your friend he lost his mind they said why he said well I don't know I told him you have a few hours to live and he laughed he smiled they said why you don't go and ask him why he smiled he said that's a good idea I really became curious so the doctor went back and he said to him, you know, I have a question, you know, I just told you, you have maybe a few hours to live. And he gave me a big smile, you are so happy, how that, how, how come? He said to him, son, all my life I'm waiting for this day. 
And you just told me in a few hours I will meet my Lord. So what you should be? So death for a believer is the, the moment of happiness, not the moment of sadness. Death of a believer is a new life. Death of an atheist is miserable. He's scared, he's terrified. They will put him under the dust. That's it, he's gone. And now, if you don't believe in God, you don't believe in God. What if God is true? Oh boy, in the top of the grave, I will go to hell. A believer, my friend, you have a better life. A believer, you have a better death. A believer, he enjoy things in different level. Even when he eat food, he feel he is not alone. He prays the Lord. He says, thank you, Lord. This is amazing. When he see a beautiful view, he says, thank you, Lord. I'm not a fool. I appreciate you. He enjoy it in different level. A level of eyes, a level of a spirit, a level of heart, and then the brain will enjoy it. A believer, he have a joy which an atheist cannot see. Neither a Muslim, because both of them, they are atheists. For anyone who worship the wrong God is a fool. That's what the Bible says. And foolishness, my friend, is our enemy. That's why I said to you, don't hate the Muslims. Hate the ignorance of the Muslims. The Bible says, my people have been destroyed because of their ignorance. He did not say because of, you know, uh, like uh, anything, just ignorance, ignorance. I mean, look at this word, ignorance. And how much this word is covering. My nation perish. They are totally perish because of their ignorance. A believer, he wake up in the morning and he say, thank you, Lord, for whatever we have in our sickness, in our happiness, in our sadness. He is still in good hands. He don't feel alone. And one of the most horrible things a human being he suffer from is when he feel alone. A believer, he don't feel alone, for he never was alone. With the Christ, you are not alone. Your belief will accompany you. And Christ, he said, every two of you mention my name, I will be between them. So right now, as we speak, he is listening to us. An atheist, he have nothing, nobody is listening to him. He's a person who worship himself, he play yoga. Yoga, the art of selfie. selfie. That's why I warn Christian, by the way, from the yoga. Yoga is very bad thing to practice. I know that some Christian schools and churches, they say to you, yoga is wonderful. That is stupid to say. Because the whole point of yoga is to forget everything around you and to focus on yourself. And that is totally against Christ's teaching. Christ's teaching is about to forget about yourself and to focus on everything around you. The same as a Christ, he gave himself. You give yourself. So a father, he loves his family. He don't focus on himself, how tired he is. He focuses how he can make his children happy, how he can make his wife happy. That is a Christ-like, not a yoga person. A woman, she focuses not in her beauty because she want to have a skin to be proud in front of her friends. A woman, she focuses how her family is beautiful. If her family is beautiful, she is a beautiful woman. If her family is not, she is not. Because what kind of success you have in your life 
if you could not have a beautiful family if you are so pretty by face but life around you is ugly where is your success you spend your day to go to the saloon and doing your nails but you have no time for your child and then he now he's taking drugs my friend With Christ, we have a goal and we have a success. With Him, we have comfort. He said, I will never leave you alone. I will send you the Comforter. We have the Comforter with us. And if you are a believer, He is with you. With this, I want to say to you, thank you all for being here. I apologize sometimes my English does not help me to explain everything I want to say, to express what I wanted to say. But I use my little limited English. I hope it's working. I hope it's doing good. I pray that the Lord He will make my little English enough for you to understand what I wanted to say. We praise Him. He loved us before we loved Him. He chose us before we chose Him. He is with us before we became with Him. He gave Himself to us before He asked us for any return. How beautiful He is. Can we be like Him? That is a question I will leave it for you. Don't be like the atheist. Don't be like those who worship and kiss stones. Be real. The real Christ let him glorify through you. Love the Muslims, don't hate them. Feel for the atheists, they are misleaded. Don't be a hateful machine. Hate will kill you, will not help you. Hate is our enemy. Let us conquer hate. Let us destroy hate. Let us have the love of Christ. Replacing the hate in this earth. If all of us we practice one sentence of a Christ, love your enemy, there's no enemy left. There's no criminals, there's no rapists, there's no thieves, there's no killers, and there's no homeless. One sentence, not a book. One sentence of a Christ, nobody dare to say. 2,000 years ago, who dared to say, love your enemy? Give me a break. Who dared to say it even now? Love your enemy. Imagine somebody go to the United Nations says, and he's a leader. Love your enemy. People will laugh at him. What are you talking about? We have nukes waiting for you. We have armies. We are spending billions and trillions of dollars and people are dying from hunger because we have a lot of enemies. One sentence of Christ will solve all the problems. Not a book. Three words. Three words, love your enemy. And in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, I say may the Lord bless you Sunday. And now it's Monday for many, including me. Until I see you again, thank you. God bless you. And I really appreciate your support and your prayer. And God is good. Soon we pray to meet again. Take care. Bye-bye.